Today, several voting rights groups gathered in the nation's capital to ask lawmakers to pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the Landmark John Lewis Act. Organizers asked President Joe Biden to push voting reform laws just as he did for the Build Back Better Infrastructure Plan. Of course, earlier this month, city Republicans used the filibuster to keep the Freedom to Vote Act from moving forward. Must say, Reese, uh, the black women certainly are out there uh, making it plain that they're, that they're gonna keep the pressure up. Per usual, black women saving democracy or at least fighting for it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see <laughs> what Dr. Carr has to say because we know how he feels about this nation. Um, but I always appreciate the um, the activism and the, the tireless and selfless activism of black women and black men are out there too. Shout out to them. Dev you're showing uh, Reverend Dr. Barber as well. But I think that Hopefully, we'll see with the passage at some point. Hopefully, it won't draw draw out too much longer. A shift to where the Voting Rights Act or the voting rights legislation that's in the Senate will get a fresher look. We'll get more of a full court press. I know that Vice President Kamala Harris has been doing a lot of um, advocacy on that, but I think that even more pressure from President Joe Biden, particularly the the um, the the openness that he signaled in his last town hall to doing some reforms to the filibuster. I think if we we do see a more of a push. We might get some measure of movement there, but I think that um, I think the person, to be honest, I think they should be really putting a lot more pressure on uh, Chuck Schumer um, about this and at least doing something, whether it's the talking filibuster or some sort of reforms to the filibuster to make to kneecap it just a little bit. And so far, he's kind of gotten a free pass, in my opinion, on this. But shout out to black women, as usual, being out there fighting for a very just cause. Greg? Greg, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Reese. I mean, look, we're here, so we have to fight. We have no alternative but to fight. But, you know, I agree with W.E.B. Du Bois when he wrote that we have to clearly distinguish between fact and desire. And the fact mm. of the matter is, <laughs> the fact of the on. matter is that we are living in a situation where the only thing that they're going to respond to is power, not even pressure. So to watch, as you showed earlier, Kristen Gillibrand sit there and lay, wait for Joe Manchin, that isn't because uh, she had an act, uh, a change in conscience. That's because the pressure is being applied. To look at Joe Manchin, the cosplay coal miner from West Virginia, whose state has uh, consistently one of the lowest voter turnouts in the country, is to see that he must be broken by organizing, by doing what Melanie Campbell is doing out there, by doing what William Barber is there in support. In other words, go into there and invade West Virginia and go knock on all the doors and turn people around. No, we have to fight, but it does no good to fight in a situation where we're fighting on fantasy. I heard the Tosha Brown a couple of weeks ago, and you and you you had a conversation with her, Roland, when she said, you know, I'm going to fight as hard in the midterm elections as Joe Biden fights to get this legislation passed right now. Now, hell... At that point, I'm listening to somebody who has reached the limits of her tolerance. But I'm also looking at somebody who understands that if we don't go out and exercise this right to vote, even if no legislation passes, we are going to be the ones that suffer more than anybody else. Joe Biden going to be OK. So I guess what I'm saying is, at the end of the day, there is no choice but to fight. And so not only must we support these sisters, not only must we support these movements, we have to join them and overwhelm these folk. Not as Martin Luther King would say, with our capacity to love, but with our capacity to exercise the simple art of self-defense. That's why we're in the street. Not because we love America so much, but because we know that if we're not in the streets, we'll be the first ones in the fire, in front of the firing squad. Uh, Faraji. Uh, you know, Martha Jones, who is a legal and cultural historian at here in Johns Hopkins University, she wrote a book called Vanguard. And one of the big things that she said in her book is she talks about the value and the importance of black women, how black women really served as the vanguard of democracy. Reese said, once again, black women are saving democracy. But she's, she said that, that, that black women should be honored as being among the founders of democracy to the degree which they are alone for most of our history in insisting, promoting, working toward an ideal that says no racism, no sexism, and arbitrating political rights in the United States. Mm -hmm. So when we look at what was happening with our sisters today, they're continuing a, 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 tr a tradition 
of mothers and grandmothers and aunts and sisters and just black women who have always been on the forefront. But it is out of the struggle. If you look at how democracy is right now and the gains that we have made, the gains of democracy comes out of the pain and struggle of the oppressed. And so mm -hmm. if we're talking about black women being on the forefront, and you're, Dr. Carr, you're absolutely right. Black women need to be supported. We all need to support it. But we got to understand that we're not just supporting some sisters. We're supporting the founders of a new uh, form of government in a way that we've never seen. And, I, and I'm convinced at this point, if, you know, as much as we talk about destroying the system, the system needs to be, you know, tear down and all of those things, I'm, con I'm, I'm convinced. Black women are going to be the bedrock or should be the bedrock of the new way of, of governance. They understand it. Risa, you understand it because inherently you understand as being a mother, how to take care of things, right? So, I mean, it's, it's, just in the, it's just in there. And so for us to see this, this is nothing new. It's just that we got to get out of our own way, especially as men. We got to stop, you know, expecting women to always be on the forefront and help them. And then guess what? When we help women, we help ourselves. Because why? No nation can rise higher than its woman. It's just that simple. I do want to play some of that. Here's uh, Melanie Campbell uh, speaking today uh, on the Supreme Court. Now. What do we want? Voting rights. When do we want it? Now. In the what? In the what? The filibuster. When? Now. In the what? The filibuster. In the what? The filibuster. When do we want that? Now. No justice, no, no peace. peace. Thank you, thank you, my sister Jocelyn Tate, who who is our senior policy advisor and all other things we ask her to do. And we thank her for all she is doing and thank you for that introduction. I want to thank all of our partners first. I want to thank National Council of Negro Women for being our convener. We want to lift up uh, Dr. Janetta Fetch Cole, Amen. who is Amen. the chair and president. And we lift her and we hope she's watching. We love you. So let's say we love you, Dr. Cole. We love you, Dr. Cole. We got, and we know you got us where, where you are. So thank you. And so we did that one mile. Y'all all right? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it again. Are y'all all right? Yeah. So we, as, as uh, Jocelyn stated, my voice is leaving me. Apologize for that. We are no ways tied. We are no ways tied. That's right. Don, get up here. Today I had a whole, I got a script. I'm going to try to stay with it. But the spirit is moving. That's no right. matter, Reverend Bishop Barber, how far they think they're going to push us back. That's right. We're going to keep moving forward. We, the black women and allies, are here. All of our allies, all of our movements. And Reverend Barbara and I were talking a few weeks ago, a few months ago now, and we said, no matter what, I got you, you got, I got you, you got me, Latasha, all of us. That's right. Black, white, red, yellow, <laughs> vanilla. That's right. The people are demanding voting right when? Now. now. Voting right when? Now. So as I stated, we started over three months ago over there at the United Methodist building, yep. demanding the Congress pass federal voting rights legislation. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Since that time, we have worked in coalition to try to connect the dots for the American people that voting rights equals justice. That's right. Voting rights equals economic That's justice. Right. Yes. Voting rights equals reproductive justice. Yes. Voting rights equals women's rights. Yes. Right. Voting rights equals the right to choose yes. your religion, yes. your faith, That's right. your gender, That's right. who you love, That's right. and who the hell is going to be in the White House, right. in the Senate, yes. in the House of Representatives? Yes. What judges will be in that building yes. that's lost its way when it comes to justice? 
but we are here today. We are not going anywhere yeah. until we get our what? Voting yeah. rights. All right, folks, if you want to see uh, that full protest, uh, we live streamed it on the Black Star Network as well as on YouTube channel, so be sure to check it out. Betty is saving big holiday shopping at Amazon. So now, she's free to become Bear Hug Betty. Settle in, kids. You'll be there a while. Ooh, where are you going? It's time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> Owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?